Thank you very much for coming out today. Greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm not that informed. I mean, that was detailed, and I'm a lobbyist, so uh, we like to use statistics for different purposes. Uh, that said, uh, I'm going to kind of do my presentation. Cut me off because I'll just keep going. I'm French, and I talk with my hands, and I'll just keep going and going. So really breaking down my comments down into really two things, the budget process and the role that the Winnipeg Chamber of Commerce plays, and then as well kind of looking ahead to the budget on April 30th, what we expect and what we will expect that we get. Uh, everyone's familiar with the Mark Twain quotes, politicians and diapers should be changed often for the same reason. Kind of look at budgets in many ways the same way. Uh, and I'm not trying to be negative there, it's just a reflection that budgets are really half science, half art. And it's the art of the politics in which that diaper reference really comes into play. And, and really, why are budgets important? We all know it sets the fiscal priorities of the province, yada, yada, yada. But really, what it does speak to is, um, when I was younger, someone said to me, you know, people will tell you all the time, these are my priorities in life, they're my family or they're whatever. But if you really want to know someone's priorities, you look two places, where their calendar, Look at their calendar, look at their checkbook. Because where you spend your time and where you spend your money are your priorities, regardless of what you say. So the budget is important in that it really is a reflection of what the government's priorities are. Um, I do have some practice in terms of the federal system. I was in a, uh, with the federal system for about 10 years, so dealing with things from RLU's annual reference level updates and T uh, Treasury Board submissions and so forth. So all riveting stuff. I know you're all just on your seat as soon as I said uh, that. But um, effectively, uh, affecting meaningful change in a budget is not something that you can do in one year. Really, when it comes to budget making, you really do need to look at it as a marathon, not as a sprint. Uh, when we lobby government, we're, we're taking a long-term approach. Uh, the conversations that we're engaging in are long-term. Uh, it's a recognition that government just cannot. It, it's very risk-averse. Any kind of major systemic change to a budget requires modeling, testing, analysis to really get a comfort level that any kind of change is ultimately going to be something that we can control, we understand, and that risks are mitigated. So ultimately, uh, when we approach budgets, I should have done this differently. Um, and, and really, when we come to budget consultations, we always enjoy the budget consultation period because really, again, that is really more an exercise in public relations and perception of influence than real change. And that's not a negative, that's just, again, recognizing what I've said, that when it comes to budgets, it's, it's a mammoth machinery. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into them, and to, you just can't turn the Titanic on, on a moment's notice. So really, um, what we're left with when it comes to the budget-making process is you have 80% of your budget that's set in stone, either statutory programs require it or collective agreements set your salary wages and so forth. So really what you're playing with is kind of a, maybe a 20% of where you can have niche programming or niche tax cuts or, or you know, the, the things that they like to announce and put in the press releases that will get some attention, but it's, it's really not core government that you're affecting change in. Um, In terms of, you know, when we when we go into meetings on, on budget consultations, we're not really looking for a win. It's really about the relationship building. Because again, affecting meaningful change means the government has to understand our perspective. That takes time to convey that, for to have that discussion, and ultimately get those changes down the road. So uh, we meet, we have those conversations, but it's really about the relationship building. And, and to me, that's the biggest um, aspect we go into any kind of budget consultation is, is the relationship. Um, but as it relates to this government currently, I, I, I think we've been very consistent and, and unequivocal in saying that the relationship is broken as it stands right now as it relates to the current provincial government and business. Uh, this was reflected back in 2010. We did a survey of our members and the number, the second leading obstacle to business growth and economic prosperity in this province was the current government's attitude towards business. Um, it's not that we have to agree all the time, but uh, business needs to feel like its concerns are valued and that it's a valued member of the community. But business is clearly saying, and that was five years ago, that was before the string of deficits that we had, before the 1% increase. And we hear from our members all the time that they do not feel 
love. And you might think that that's, oh, okay, do you really need to feel love? <clears throat> if you talk to Bill Morrissey at Yes Winnipeg, one of the things when they're going out and trying to attract companies to Winnipeg, one of the things the companies from outside Winnipeg say is they need to feel like the government they're dealing with gets them, gets their issues, and actually cares about those issues. And if you don't have that, it matters, and it matters in a big way. And I'm not going to go into the details, but I can tell you the lack of love, there's a cost to that, and it's a sizable cost. Again, we don't have to agree on everything. This isn't about getting our way and, and stamping because we didn't get our way. It's about just at least feeling like you're at the table and that what you say at the table matters. In terms of the budget itself, what are we looking for as a Chamber of Commerce? The first thing is fiscal stability. You, you did a great job, Wayne, in kind of showing some of the, the financial challenges and, and, and what we've seen, but from the, the business perspective, we always take a look at everything in a totality. For example, uh, when it comes to Winnipeg itself, uh, Winnipeg's been rated 14th out of 15th by KPMG in terms of the total tax burden. Now, some people, you know, they, on the business tax, I know I'm kind of going on a tangent here, but uh, the business tax, well, we don't need to worry about the business tax. Business never looks at just one thing. They look at the totality of something and then make decisions based on that. So when we come to the fiscal stability, we look at five years of consecutive deficits. We see a Moody's downgrading the provincial credit rating from stable to negative. Now that might just be semantics, but it's also a 0.5% increase in the debt servicing costs. And our debt servicing costs right now are $230 million a year. That's $230 million, that's your credit card payment, that's your 17%. That's just your tax dollars going to pay for debt that we're ramping up at alarming rates. Uh, we take a look at a recent uh, province unveiled its uh, the budget forecasts and saying that the budget right now, we're actually, our deficit's higher than they forecasted in the last budget, but it's not as bad as it was the last forecast before that. So it's like the ship's sinking faster than we originally thought, but not as fast as we thought it was yesterday. It's one way of looking at it. Um, Manitoba debt per capita, I know we talk about debt per GDP, but our debt per capita is the highest west of the Maritimes. That's a distinction without distinction. Um, the Rainy Day Fund, in 2009, only five years ago, it was $807 million. It is down to $220 million. 75% drain in five years. And that's meant to be for rainy day, but it's being used to prop up a systemic deficit that the province has created. Uh, we need a firm timeline and action plan to get the books back to black. That's what business is looking for, and uh, we're hoping to see it. A commitment to economic development. You know, it's, when we say a commitment to economic competitiveness, sorry, um, it's not a checkbox, it's not a campaign pledge we're looking for, it's a mindset, it's a lens in which you look at through everything. Brad Wall, Premier of Saskatchewan, the Saskatchewan government, I'm going to give props to them. Oil is a big part of their economy, and oil has really hit rock bottom. Everyone was expecting them, well, they're going to be in massive deficits, but they just announced a $107 million surplus in their budget, even with oil at the price it's at. Why is that? Because everything they do, health, education, economy, everything is through that lens of competitiveness. How do we compete? How are we innovating? How are we delivering best value for taxpayer dollars? And even with oil bottoming out, they're still in a surplus position. That's the benefit of having a competitive mindset. Cost control. Last year, Manitoba inflation was 1.5% or 1.9. I always get those two. Figures. It was under two. If you look at the budget, every single department, save for one, had increases beyond inflation. The province argues we're controlling costs, but the fact is costs are going up above inflation. There needs to be a commitment to just rein in costs. Uh, and lastly, we need to see the private sector as the engine of economic growth. The fact is Manitoba is the second highest province as it relates to the percentage of workers employed in the private sector at 26.3%. Uh, one out of four Manitobans works for the provincial government or a municipal or a, a public uh, in the public sector. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but why is the province will point to the upcoming uh, conference board report? We just had the conference board in, and they said growth in Manitoba will be second best in the country next year or this year, and the year after will lead the country. But it's because of government spending. 
And that's your dollars, your tax dollars. So what are we expecting from the budget? That's what we're hoping for. What will we get? It'll be the best of times, it'll be the worst of times. They'll reference the conference board report and celebrate, and then they'll turn around and say, but due to these um, uncertain economic times, we can't balance the books. It would be irresponsible. And my, my thing is, my final comment on the, that is, I get it. I mean, I have a family. I have to meet my, their needs, my children's needs, my spouse's needs. Um, we've got demands and we've got resources and, and we try to balance the books. Um, when you say, you just use the excuse of, well, we can't do it because that would cut into priorities of Manitoba. In our view, that's an abdication of responsibility and leadership. It was Tony Blair that said, leadership is the art of saying no. Saying easy, saying yes is easy. It really is. And if you just want to use any excuse you can, that's easy. That's not leadership.